All right, let's talk about workflow for a second. When I talk about workflow, I talk about what is needed to do something very efficiently in a program or several programs or across many programs. If you know that workflow, let's say I do something in Photoshop and I export it to Illustrator, then I take it into Illustrator and put it into um, some other program like Maya or ZBrush or some other program. You're, you're jumping around on different platforms, different programs, maybe even operating systems. That workflow right there, you have to know what it is and you have to abide by it. If something works, use it. Know what your workflow is, you'll be able to crank out art all day long. Okay, so as a workflow, the first thing I always look at is how to set up my interface to kind of um, work towards what I'm doing rather than against it. So if I'm going to teach you how to like draw or digital paint in Photoshop, I'm going to have to have a good workflow and a good interface. So I'm going to get rid of all the stuff that I never use. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to color, styles, swatches, this stuff. Okay, and I never use this stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is close that out. Okay, leaving me with this little thing in the corner that I can toggle on and off. Which is a lot nicer and I can tuck it away to just the barest of icons. Things I use all the time, layers. Layers are used like 100% of the time. So layers, I'm going to tear off. And layers does not include channels, so I'm going to rip channels off and drag that out. And it does not include paths, so I'm going to delete those out. So, doo, doo. so here's my layers palette. Okay, the next thing in my workflow that I use all the time is a navigator. Okay, and navigator is almost more important than layers. So I'm going to make a little tiny layers. And the next one I'm going to bring in is Navigator. Okay, again, uh, Histogram, not using that. So I'm going to tear that off. Info, not using that either. Just my Navigator. Navigator, I, I try to make as big as possible. Okay. And you can adjust it by going over here and adjusting it just like that. Okay, so I got two palettes here that are already taking up a lot of room. And you can combine these palettes together to form one palette, just like that. No next thing I use all the time is brushes. So I'll launch brushes. Of course, I don't use clone source, but I do use brushes. So brushes and navigator I'm going to put together and close clone source out. So now I can quickly grab brushes, navigator, brushes, navigator. Pretty cool, right? Okay, next thing, tools. I use those all the time, tool, tool presets. Okay, tool presets. I will probably put these under the brushes, navigator category. There we go, that feels a little bit better. And as time goes on, I might even, you know, not show you something just to show you why you would add more to this interface. Okay, so what I do here is now go into Workspace and save this. Save Workspace. Now we'll call it uh, Digital Paint. And I want everything. I want menus, panel locations, keyboard shortcuts. Look at that. See, now I can have my own keyboard shortcuts across different students. So maybe I will make this specific for me, JW. That way, if you're in my classroom and you're making one of these, you have your own saved workspace. 
All right, so now I should have a workspace and I have digital paint JW. Nice. Also, you can drop this down and you can have right at the top. So what happens um what happens if I close out Photoshop? And let's relaunch Photoshop. What's a nice thing about the actual workspace is I don't have to save it anywhere specific on the hard drive. It'll automatically be there. So now, anytime I go to open up Photoshop, I, it launches Digital Paint JW, and if I need to go to Essentials, I can. And then I can toggle it back. If it's a very customized interface, it might take a couple seconds to actually kick in. So, all right, so that is saving your workspace. Let's go on to making a scratch pad.